So the Federal Reserve is going to continue to cut rates. Uh, <clears throat> to me, at this point, it seems obvious that that is the plan going forward. Um, especially because for the longest time I've been hearing that they wanted to raise rates. But now it just kind of seems like they've made up their mind and they're going to go forward with cutting rates slowly. But what does that mean? Um, it means that we're getting closer and closer to a reality where we could see negative interest rates. And I'm honestly not even 100% sure that we arrive at that point. Um, it just seems like at a certain point, inflation could easily get out of control. But I just started thinking about it, like, what if that doesn't happen, right? And, like, what if somehow the system could miraculously continue under negative interest rates? Well, then, basically, what that means is that you would have to basically pay the bank in order to store your money there, which is not a good thing. Um, and I just thought, like, yo, if we didn't have any cryptocurrencies, like, what would we do? Like, yeah, you, I mean, then really gold and precious metals would really soar through the roof because at that point, it's just like, it's just so much more of a headline grabber, I guess, you know, like negative interest rates. I mean, people would barely care now, not everybody, but I'm saying like a lot of people don't care um, about the Federal Reserve. Not, not as many people that probably should care. But, you know, I'm just so glad that we have cryptos now. And uh, that's why I really believe in the, the Bancor protocol. And that's why I really believe in cryptos overall. But um, specifically the Bancor protocol, just because I've bought into the vision that money can come from people. Because at the end of the day, like... <clears throat> What this whole kind of EOS thing has taught me, this whole EOS governance thing has taught me is that it's very hard, it's very hard to make a perfect system. And, you know, you can be actively involved, you can be, you know, whatever you want to say, you can be, you know, intelligent, you can be well read, you can be researched. You could have seen something very similar happen to a whole nother project or a whole nother scenario, like example with Lisk. And you know, it's possible. I'm not saying that this is gonna happen. I still have very high hopes for EOS. But it's very possible that you know, we could go down that route again, you know, where it just becomes a, a vote buying race to the bottom, which I hope doesn't happen. But the point I'm trying to make is that <clears throat> It's very easy to criticize when you're on the outside, you know? Um, when you just, you don't have anything to do with the system, it's easy to say, well, the system's screwing me, you know? And and, it, and don't get me wrong, it is. Like, you know, the, the way that inflation is set up is, is just absolutely screwing you. But that, I think, largely is because there's no free market to currency. Um, what I truly believe is that the free market is one of the most powerful forces that exist. And whenever you have a free market, then you usually get the best product. And because we haven't had a free market on money, there's only been one creator of money, and that is pretty much your sovereign government and your sovereign currency. Well, then it's allowed to be a bad product. And they've been able to control monetary policy for you know years and you don't really have you know any say in it you know they as a government since they issue their own sovereign currency can make decisions monetary policies that are going to affect my kids kids you know i don't think they actually will but i'm just saying like in theory this is what's going on you know with all the borrowing and all the debt and it's like that all leads to inflation. And what happens is now that all that money that you know you earn is, is, is worth less. You know, with all the technology that we have today, the prices for things are actually supposed to go down. You know, it was predicted, <clears throat> actually John Maynard Keynes, um, who the Bancor protocol is actually inspired by, 
he actually predicted that by the time you know I would be working of working age that Americans would be working 14 hour weeks just because of how good technology was getting there wouldn't be a need for Americans to work 40 hour weeks just because of the amount of money that they would be making versus the amount of um, prices that thing would things would cost so that goes to show you right there that that's like the scam you know what I mean like it doesn't matter um, how much you make even though you make a good amount of money certainly more than you would have made um, 50 60 years ago um, your average person makes more money but the prices of goods and services just cost a lot more because of inflation so and it costs a lot more to live and, and stuff like that so that's why I've kind of really bought into the whole crypto thing as a whole but also the Bancorp protocol because I, I really believe in multiple currencies because there has to be multiple options in order for the free market to exist you can't just have one alternative system you can't just be like oh here's Bitcoin so we're good no like eventually you know after a while people will just attack 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 Bitcoin and try to break it because there's just you know or try to corrupt it or something like that and it's just like you know we need to have multiple systems we need to have multiple everything multiple blockchains multiple cryptos we need to have as many choices as possible and I think that's what the Bancorp protocol ultimately is trying to achieve they want a long tail of cryptocurrencies um, they want options so now <clears throat> you know if if we had options it would really put the pressure on the government to actually act responsi responsibly when it comes to monetary policy you know you can't just say oh you know I'm gonna just print millions and billions and trillions of dollars of debt out of nothingness and, and fund a war or you know fund you know all these government programs that are really much more waste than they're than they do good but it's all politics it's all because you know we share this big pool of money as Americans and politics get involved we have the political system some people believe this some people believe that you try to please both parties and you you really can't please anybody you end up pleasing nobody the system is, is fundamentally broken because there is no free market because we don't control the money but if we made the money if we had options if we could choose our own money or you know our our favorite um, whatever stores money or youtubers money or you know content creator or whoever you know what I mean bookstore like it just literally could be anything if there was other options as far as money and is concerned and really when I say money I mean value well then it would automatically make people switch away from their sovereign currency whatever country they're from and they want to hold their value in other vehicles because their government's not doing the right thing so at the end of the day what it could lead to is either one governments have to act more responsibly when it comes to monetary policy because there is that free market pressure or number two nobody wants to even be paid in dollars or whatever their sovereign nation's currency anymore is they're just gonna be like oh you know what I'll get paid in Bitcoin or I'll get paid in Ethereum or I'll get paid in you know whatever I, I you know my favorite author has a coin I'll get paid let, I want to get paid in that so what will happen is people will only literally ever convert into their nation's currency whenever they need to pay their taxes but um, ultimately I don't think I think that will lead to a lot less taxes because I think that will lead to a lot less government because I think government has only been allowed to grow as big as it has been because of um, politics because of the fact that you know everybody's solution they, they because they can literally spend as much money as they want to grow themselves as much as they can they just need the political support to do that you know if they don't have the funds if they literally can't create the money anymore 
um, that the people use, then I think that just brings us into a whole, a whole new world, you know, a whole new world. And uh, ultimately, I mean, this is way down the line, but I think we could definitely see a world where the government just doesn't exist anymore because what do we need the government for? Like, you know, the government, all of its, you, I always said, I look at the government almost as a piece of technology. You know, at a certain point though, why, why would you even need the government if you don't need them to issue money? You know, you don't need them to keep records because the blockchain does that. Um, you don't need them to do any sort of like policing or governance structure because you can, we found a way like 20 years ago to master governance in a much better way they can ever be done with actual real human beings. It'll all be artificial intelligence and we'll have laws that we all agree upon. And if you break the law, well then maybe some private company um, will have, you know, will be like, okay, we are allowed to arrest this person and whatever, put them in jail or whatever the case may be. I mean, it, it's, it's not hard for me to believe that one day there will be a world where governments don't exist. And personally, um, I think it'll be a more peaceful world, but it has to happen in time. Um, everything has to happen in time. And, you know, I look forward to the journey.